Hi guys, welcome to the present time. Every video you've seen for the last few weeks has been um, the past. Life's been a little crazy. Josh is here, he's next to me. Hi. <laughs> With this whole coronavirus thing, we've been working from home and getting to spend more time with baby here, um, who is eating, so hopefully she'll stay quiet. I wanted to share my epidural story. I went into labor thinking, I'm gonna try to do it epidural free. I have a high pain tolerance, but if I need an epidural, I need an epidural. So I did a lot of research. I knew that getting an epidural was not a big deal. Um, it's, uh, it is a procedure, it's basically a surgical procedure but it's not that painful, um, especially for those who have high pain tolerance. Um, as you know from my last video, we went into labor around 1.30 in the morning. When we got into our room, it was around 3.30. I was exhausted. I hadn't slept in weeks because of just being pregnant and, every, and just being up that night. I was so tired and that weekend I was sick. Happened to be sick now, so sorry for my voice. And I just was like, you know what, let's do it. The epidural is gonna help me get through the pain and let me sleep, and maybe I can sleep my labor away. Uh, so I requested the epidural pretty soon after, and I believe around five in the morning is when we, we the doctor came in, the anesthesiologist, and started to do my epidural. Um, he comes in, and I'm gonna be very blunt and honest, I did not like him, Josh did not like him either. Um, he came in while Josh was grabbing a snack. Maybe it was six in the morning-ish because he was grabbing breakfast. Um, and he starts talking to me and I said, do you mind waiting for my husband to come back? He just ran out and he kept talking. And I was like, okay. And then I had a contraction and he was trying to like ask me yes or no questions. I was like, you're gonna have to give me a minute. I'm having a contraction. He kept talking. Finally, I get to sit on the bed and I said, tell me what you need from me because I don't know what you need from me. I'm not a doctor, this is the first time I'm doing this, so I have no clue. And he just kind of starts going for it. The nurse that we had was amazing. Her name was Samantha, shout out to her. She was fantastic, we loved her. Um, and he said it'll take about five to 10 minutes the entire time from him getting, starting and from him like me laying down. I had no sense of time, but all I remember is this feels a lot longer than 10 minutes. And he kept poking me and poking me and poking me. And I finally was like, are we almost done? And he said, no, we're not even close to being done. I can't find it. Like he can't find the sweet spot. Finally, he got it and I was able to lay down. Um, there were a lot of difficulties. I wasn't laying straight. Um, he just, my back, my spine wasn't straight. We finally got it. And as soon as I laid down, I was like, I feel nauseous. And I felt nauseous my entire pregnancy, but this was like a different kind of nauseous. Like the kind of nauseous where you're like, I am gonna throw up, um, but I could not control my body. I, he threw me back onto the bed and I just was like, this is the worst. I, no one prepared me for this. Um, I had never heard this kind of epidural horror story. Finally, I get numb. I like start to feel the numbing. I get the catheter in, like we're all set up. And then I feel funny because my you're supposed to be numb from like your belly button down. I was numb from my chest down. My entire body, except for my head, was numb. So I brought it up to Samantha and she said, okay, your dose may just be high, sleep off. It may just be the initial like brunt of it. I slept and I felt high. Like they had so much medicine running through me. I did not feel like me. Finally, it wore off and they said I could press this button to get more pain meds. I told her, I was like, I don't want to press it if I'm going to feel the same way. I pressed it. I felt the same way. So I called the ana another anesthesiologist in. I said, can you adjust my dosage? Just like make it half. I don't care if I feel a little bit. I just don't want to feel the way I'm feeling now. So she was able to lower it. I was able to get through labor, um, but I had the epidural. I basically let it wear off through labor. Um, and then as we were about to push, I gave myself another dose just to get through the actual labor. Um, she was born at noon on a Tuesday. Um, Tuesday or Wednesday, early, early morning, at like four in the morning, I called my nurse in, um, in the recovery area and I said, hey, listen, I'm starting to get a really gnarly migraine. 
Um, my back's hurting, but I think the back is just from laying in the bed um, for over 12, 24 hours. But I'm really starting to get a gnarly migraine. So she gave me um, Flexeril, I want to say it's called. Um, Tylenol was not working for me. Ibuprofen was not working for me. So they gave me this Flexeril, which really cut the edge off. And I told her it went from like an eight to like a four, which I could manage. Went the rest of the night. Um, and then that rest of that day, I just, it got worse and worse. And the back pain went away, but it went to my neck. And I, I realized throughout the day that every time I sat up where I was not laying down, I was in excruciating pain. Wednesday night, um, or I guess it was Thursday night at this point, I was, it was probably like eight o'clock. I was in tears. I could not do anything. I did not want to get up and take care of her. I felt terrible. Um, but I basically was telling the doctors and the nurses, I'm at like 11 or 12 on a pain scale. And that scared Josh because I have a very high pain tolerance. I don't complain. Um, and it took a lot for me to complain about this. They tried an IV, they tried more Tylenol, they tried more Flexerol, nothing helped. So they did, they wanted to do something called a blood patch. They gave me the option of just wait. They told me what it was. Um, it was a epidural, postdural um, spinal leak. But basically when they did the epidural, he poked the membrane around my spinal cord um, and it leaked spinal fluid. So it changed the pressure. Basically think of if you get pain on a airplane from the air pressure, it's that times like a hundred. It's the worst thing I've ever experienced. Worse than labor, worse than all of my pregnancy. Um, I get migraines and this made regular migraines feel like a walk in the park. So they offered something, they said two things. I can wait for it to go away. It can take up to two weeks and I just live with the pain. Or I can try something called a blood patch, which is basically they do an epidural again, but they take the blood out of my arm and stick it into my back instead of medicine. Um, they came in, they set it up again. I made sure to ask 12 times if my spine was straight. He said I could tell where the spot was because I had a little scar there when he finally got me with the needle. And they were literally prepping me for the arm. They were gonna take like a huge amount of blood out of my arm. And they were like, this is gonna be the worst of it. This is gonna be the worst of it. And sh I literally looked at her, I was like, this is this is nothing. Like I have a high pain tolerance, this, this is nothing. And she was like, okay. And that's when all the nurses started to believe me that I was like, no, this really hurts. That didn't, but this headache really hurts. I was in tears from them doing this because I was sitting up. As soon as they start doing it, they get, uh, they take 20 cc's of blood and that's what they'd like to put into your back. Um, and that just clots kind of a hole apparently. They took all 20 and they only got 10 in me before I was like, the pressure is too much. You cannot do anymore. I have to lay down. So I laid down and they were like, you should instantly feel better, do you? And I was like, I do. My head, like my neck and my head still hurt from sitting up for so long but I do feel a lot better. The instructions were to lay flat on my back for like an hour. I stayed there for about 45 minutes before she started crying um, and Josh had slept for the first time. So I was like, you know what, it's been 45 minutes, I can get up. As soon as I got up to help her, I felt fine. I was like, oh, this feels great. I went up and got to the bathroom um, and when I laid down and throughout the rest of the night, I was like, okay, my headache's getting coming back. It's not gone. Basically the on-call doctor that was going to discharge me came in and I said, listen, still have this really bad headache. Are you still going to discharge me? If I didn't have Josh, I don't think I would have been able to take care of her. Um, I couldn't sit up. It, I had to make a decision if I was going to take care of her or go to the bathroom um, because after that I'd have to lay down. Finally, we get discharged. We go home and I'm like, you know what? I'll just manage for two weeks. It won't be that bad. I'll just figure it out. So we were discharged on Thursday morning. On Friday, she had her very first pediatrician's appointment. And I had been talking to her pediatrician in the hospital. But when we went to the doctor's office, I was sitting up so long, I had to like go to the car and lay the seat back and rest. I had to get up and go back to the car and lay my head down and rest. And we were there for probably about an hour. And I was in tears talking to the pediatrician. The pediatrician was like, you have to go to the hospital. You can't live like this. It's not okay. We went back to the house to rest a little because we had people coming over on Friday. And then Friday night, we drove to the hospital. So we got to the hospital around five o'clock. Um, they had me wait in the waiting room and I said to them, uh, mind you, it was an ER in a busy area during a full moon on a Friday night. It was packed. We knew we were going to wait. I basically told them, I don't care how long I wait. I just need to lay down. I need to be on a stretcher. By this point, Josh was like 
super upset because he saw me in so much pain. He was taking care of her. This is the first time he was really left alone with a baby because I had to go into the back by myself because it was flu season. We had one of our really good friends, Lily, thank you, Lily, uh, pick her up and take her back to our house to be watched um, so Josh could spend the time with me. And we proceeded to wait in the ER. Um, I got another blood patch, which did work. They were able to do the full 20 cc's of blood. It was not painful at all like any of the ev other sticks. So in the end, I got basically seven epidurals instead of one. And the guys in the OR that did that second blood patch were amazing. I felt nothing. I barely even felt the numbing needle where the first epidural and the second, I felt burning of the numbing needle and then I felt extreme pressure, like the numbing never really took effect. Um, and all you should feel is a bee sting from, like a bee sting type pain from the numbing needle and then you shouldn't feel anything else. That second blood patch seemed to work. I laid on the cot for an extra hour um, and because we were waiting to be discharged and waiting for reports, I was actually able to lay there for two hours and slowly incline myself until I felt 100% better. It was exactly as they said, the blood patch took away the pain immediately. It felt amazing to go home. Um, we probably went, got home at like 11. I was able to go home, I was able to hold her, I was able to spend the night with her, um, and even pump, because I had yet to be able to pump because I couldn't sit up. All in all, do your research, do more research than I did because I, uh, I didn't do enough and I was, I didn't get full stories of how epidurals can go wrong. Um, the doctor t stuck me five times and one of those caused an issue and I could have, I'm still dealing with pain today. I'm still dealing with nerve pain in my right leg um, and slight headaches every once in a while. Thank you guys so much for watching and being patient with us while we take this time to enjoy a new baby um, and during this crazy coronavirus time. Leave us a comment on what you wanna see. Um, we're, since the Disney parks are closed, there's not too much to talk about, um, but we do have a Disney trip coming up, so we'll be talking about that at least. Be sure to watch our last Disney trip for when we went to California. Subscribe, comment down below, and stay safe during this crazy time. Self-quarantine if you can, work from home if you can. Um, take every precaution necessary. See you real soon.